This episode of The Modern Rogue is brought to you by Grammarly. Head on over to Grammarly.com slash Modern Rogue. Spell it right. G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash Modern Rogue. Get 20% off. I slipped into a little t techy oh, Texas it, there. I heard it. 20% off a premium subscription. Do it now. It's all good. Wine <laughs> tumbler. <laughs> So what's your move, Murphy? I'm gonna tap my jack of hearts. Does anybody have any twos? Go fish. <sighs> Gentlemen, I do believe they call it a Sheboygan flush. No. Yes! <laughs> 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 What are these discs for? What do they mean? I should have played my Black Lotus. <laughs> All right, we're back with Chris Dixon teaching us more nefarious skills. Normally, I'm the one like teaching them nefarious skills, but Chris is more skilled than I am. So in this case, what we want to do is focus on what are the ways to tell whether or not you're being hustled at your friendly card games. Absolutely. So a lot of people, have, you know, they, they get their guys, they, they sit around, they have the chips and the, and the cigars and the whiskey, and then they break out the deck and we play for real money. And a lot of them are friends, but even friends tend to cheat people. I mean, since games have been around, there's always been somebody trying to do advantage play and take advantage of somebody. Advantage play is legitimate ways of playing playing that maybe take advantage of, like for example, let's say you're Kim Kardashian and you have mirrored sunglasses and you keep looking at your cards like this. <laughs> that would be advantage play. Absolutely. So this is, uh, these are just some key things to keep in mind when you're sitting at your own friendly home game, just to make sure everything's on the up and up. Obviously, uh, a deck of cards, you know, we're all familiar, we've all seen them, so it, it's very uh, casual when we see somebody break them out. A brand new deck of cards would take maybe 13 shuffles to kind of get it completely randomized. And even that random order is just something we've never seen before. And that's where the real strategy of these card games come in, trying to play against the cards and the player. The game here is we want to know how to play defense, how to tell if somebody's trying to trick you at your own game of cards. Absolutely. One thing is, is how much control the dealer is actually going to have on the deck. If they're holding it close, if they're trying to hide what they're doing, obviously, you know, they want to make it look like they're doing something that they're not if they're going to be cheating. So in this instance, we've actually shuffled the deck maybe four or five times. But if you notice, Jason, every single card stayed completely in the same order. This is why I never gamble with magicians. <laughs> I was watching you. So I was watching your hand. If I had this pre-stacked and I had it down in my little cubby and I wanted to ring it in later, I could bring it in. It's already stacked for me to get the four aces or the four jacks or what have you. I could even shuffle it a couple times, let it keep completely get mixed up. And then when it comes to my turn to deal, I'm going to get those jacks or aces. Now, if I remember correctly, tell me if this is apocryphal or if it's true, I believe this is called a cooler because after handling the deck, the deck gets warmed up, but then when you swap it for a prearranged deck, the deck is physically cooler than the other deck. Because it hasn't been used as much, right? So I'm using this deck and I'm shuffling it around. The temperature of my hands are actually going to change the temperature of the paper. You'd actually be able to feel that. In fact, give it a cut. Okay. Uh, uh. Yeah, and complete the cut. Like so? Just like that. And so what they would do is they would, they would switch it out for a completely different deck. That was smooth. How and did you make those colors change? <laughs> and it's cool. Sa says the man who learned how to swap dice. <laughs> oh, that was cool. I forgot about right? that. <laughs> so that's another way to, to, to keep track of what's going on. Yes, it's called a cooler because the deck's been waiting down here and getting colder as we play. So in this case, in a friendly game, you would never want to come out and accuse your compatriots of cheating, but you might want to make sure that they hadn't swapped out the deck for a pre-range deck. Right. What is a classy way to get around that. The best way is to pay attention, to show them that you're paying attention, right? To burn them a little bit, just kind of lean in a little bit, kind of show, you know, if they're doing something on the side, you just want to show them that you know what they're doing. That enough, that scare, that fear enough that I might be suspected should be enough for somebody, an advantage player to back off. When you feel the heat around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Another way is, again, uh, the way they deal, right? So let's say if we were playing poker, we would have aces, right? That's, that's a good hand, right? 
you know, you'd have the river and the flop and everything like that. They're going to gather up those cards. They're going to manipulate them into certain positions in the deck. Good gamblers or good cheats can manipulate them anywhere they like. In this case, I saw two aces get scooped up. I saw some shuffling. I'm going to assume the two aces are still on the bottom. The two aces are on the bottom. Okay. That's right. Which doesn't really help me as the dealer unless I'm trying to control it. And what we're doing is we're controlling those aces straight off the bottom. <laughs> Here, check it out. We'll do it face up so you can see. This is what they're doing. They're dealing, 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 and then lightly pulling that card out. But they do it so fast that you're not gonna be able to see it as it breaks that plane. I do know two things about bottom dealing, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong about this. Number one, it's easier the thinner the deck Absolutely. gets. Yep. And then number two, the thicker the deck is, the more likely you are to get this, this kind of click sound. That's where, right. So that's something you, you listen that, for. That, right. You're gonna wanna hear that click. The card you're dealing from the bottom, scraping across the yep. deck. Listen. Right, okay. Literally, so this normal, and then, do you oh, hear that? Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. tell. Another one is catching a hanger. You might have seen the movie Rounders, right? Where yeah. Ed Norton gets uh, beat up in a VFW because you're pulling a card. You can see it kind of loosen, you know, roll around the sides. So again, it's just being perceptive, looking at their hands, just seeing what they're doing. Pay attention, it's your money on the table, right? Now, the power of a bottom deal as I remember it is that you can decide out of, you know, I don't know, you could be dealing for seven people. You could pick one of those seven and then uh, uh, normal, 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 you, normal, normal. But the downside is that uh, you got the click, you got the sound. And, and people could see it. Angles. Angles. I mean, if Brian can see the ace on the bottom because I'm dealing oh, this way yeah. and now it's not there anymore, I mean, I'm in trouble. Right. So what would be the more subtle approach? So a more subtle approach to control a card is first we got to control a card. So let's try to get an ace somewhere where I would know it. Like with the force? With I don't understand what you're doing. So what I'm doing is I'm peeking at these cards as they go by. Ah! Okay, and I'm going to try to find an ace. And in this position, I actually already maneuvered it to the top of the deck so that I can use it for a different gambling move. But I would look for an ace and I would cut there. Right, that's gonna be my cut point, and then I would shuffle that on top of the deck or second top of the deck or what have you. In this case, there it is. So your target card is second from the top. Correct, so what I'm doing is I'm shuffle tracking. And another thing is it gives me an idea as an advantage player what cards are gonna be dealt to other people or what cards won't be dealt. For instance, if I see all these cards go by, there's nines, eights, aces, jacks, kings, queens, I'm only dealing three hands, I know that he's not gonna have the king of clubs because it's way down here. So in a friendly game of poker, Everybody takes turns being the dealer, but in a less friendly one, the dealer's job is to do nothing but deal. But if you made friends with the dealer, the dealer might be able to just sort of look over and nod or wink at you to let you know this is a good round for you to Absolutely. bet more. Confederate work is big. I mean, if I was cheating as the dealer, I would never win the hands myself. Right. I would have somebody else that comes in a little bit late, sit down, say, hey, can I play a little bit? I don't know much about poker, I'm kind of new. And then I just feed this guy stuff. He gets beginner's luck, he and I split the pot at the end. Okay, so if the ace is the second one. So the ace is now actually on the top, okay? So okay. I want that, or I would want my confederate to have that. And that's gonna be difficult when I'm not the first player, right? Unless I do what's called a second deal. Super good, right? Second I'm deal. Watching, like I know something's happening, and it's still happening, and I can't do anything about it. If it makes you feel better, and I think I'm right about this, Chris, you correct me if I'm wrong. So, like with these white bordered ones, you would be more likely to see this white border flashing as it came out second from there. Whereas with this full bleed, you wouldn't notice it. Absolutely, and that's why I picked these Casino B decks because you can't differentiate where the card is coming from. Because, like you said, that camouflage. Oh! And it just melts right through, right? That's right? smooth. So the whole point of that is that I'm feeding these cards out to the rest of the table. But when I want that one card for myself or for my confederate, my partner, we know exactly where it's at. I want to emphasize that I am sitting inches away and it is still 
flawless. Now, there is a bit of a tell, like for the bottom deal, we were able to listen for that click as it swept up through the entire deck. In this case, it's the, what, the positioning, the, the holding of it? The holding of the hands, right? So there's something called a mechanic's grip. And the mechanic, he fixes something. So a mechanic fixes a game. Same thing, it's, it's kind of wrapping a claw around. It's a lot of control. Normally when people, novices deal, you know, they'll deal like this. If you're in Asia, they'll, they'll do it real low like this, you know? But people that hold it like this, they tend to know what they're doing. Another thing is, it's called neck tying, and it's based on how much confidence the gambling cheat has on their skill. What it means is you're tilting the deck towards your necktie, literally, and it hides that move even more because now you're not seeing that angle of the top of the deck. So in this case, let's say I wanted to keep the pinhole camera one on top. I would aim it like a laser right at your eyes so that you would have the thinnest possible angle. So as I come in, I'm grabbing the second card, setting it down, second card, setting it down. And every time I grab a card, my hands are covering everything. So hopefully you're not noticing whether it's the top or the second one. Well, the skill required here is so subtle that if you're off by millimeters, it'll blow it. Correct. Did it, did it, did it look good? Yes. Okay, good. All right, all right. That's all that matters. And that, that's a great point, Brian, is the control. If somebody's really controlling it, you know, they're really kind of just pulling things in and they're kind of like changing the angles or setting their glasses there or, you know, their phone on the side, things like that. You know that something's kind of up. People that are loose and free and, you know, they're on those are the honest people. But again, good gambling cheats can get very loose and free with it. And speaking of Confederates, there's other ways as well. So if, if I'm working with somebody and I've got a, a king six and I got to let him know that, there's interesting ways I could bet where I'm just placing the chips so, on certain parts of the cards to let him know. We have a little secret uh, language. We've learned enough coding to know that this is a very simple binary language. Yeah. We got zero, 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 one, zero, 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 oh, wow. one, one, zero, zero, uh, one, 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 two, one, one, zero, and so on and so on and so on, right? Exactly. There's there's lots of different little tiny ways that you can subtly, because again, just knowing what one hand is out of five hands, you and him are going to probably have a big advantage. What do you think a classy way to sort of test to see whether or not somebody's fudging or not would be? I would ask for a new deck. First of all, if I saw somebody doing something, I'd ask for a new deck. Maybe it's not the deck that's stacked, but it'll throw them off their game enough where they're like, Ugh, somebody's suspect of something. A gun on the table also <laughs> uh, tends to bring out the honesty in people. Guns, switchblades. But also, you don't have to accuse somebody of cheating. You could say like, oh my God, my wife just brought me this new deck from Vegas. Right. I can't wait to play with it. Here, let's play with that. And then if somebody is uncomfortable with it, that's a clue. That's a little hint that maybe something's amiss. Yeah, change where you sit. You know, I'm gonna sit over here now so that you're the guy cutting. If you know that somebody is gonna try to manipulate the deck or, or something, you, like I said, you can pay attention to it and call them out on it in a subtle way just by looking or just change things up because it's about getting comfortable. They're gonna be comfortable in their surroundings and then when you break that comfort, it kind of shakes them a little bit, or at least it should. Okay, so there's ways to manipulate the cards during the game. What else is there? Well, you can manipulate the money. You know, when you're putting your all in and you put it in, you cop some chips out a little bit. So now I'm holding back more than I actually uh, put in. That's fascinating because in that case, you're taking your own chips and keeping some back when, when you're pretending not to. But the way I always heard it was like, you were helping somebody else. Like, oh, Jason, you're such a big winner, <laughs> such a big winner. <laughs> and then keeping some for myself. Absolutely, yeah. If you're the pot raker or if you're the dealer as well, and it's time for you to push it out, that move that I just did could be for holding back my own money so that, you know, I'm, I bet 10,000, but I really only left eight. Or, hey, you're the big winner, chicken dinner but I'm walking away with just a little bit extra. That doesn't seem to require a lot of skill. Nope. Uh, the confidence is try what's it, key there. It is. Yeah, right now, it. go for it. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> but you see the point, right? I mean, it's astonishingly easy to cop some back, right? And that, that's brute force. I mean, that is the base level of, of gambling cheating. I mean, if you get caught doing that, you know, you don't need skill at the cards, but also, you know, the repercussions are gonna be pretty quick and pretty sudden. And the better you get, you can add layers onto it, like your behavior, where you're being really talkative and funny and friendly and 
like when you were saying that, sliding it over to me. Oh, good job, Jason! I can't believe you did that. Right. Nobody's even watching. You're they're watching your exuberance and your your performance. Right. They say that the best way to do misdirection is to look somebody in the eyes and ask a meaningful question. Because at that point, it's very difficult for you to be looking at what's happening down here. Like, what are you gonna spend the money on, Jason? <laughs> yeah. What did your grandfather say before he died? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? maybe not like that. <laughs> so another one is, since we're all sitting around usually drinking at a poker game, is acting drunk. And according to uh, 007, as we learned in our martini episode, Bond would often get his martinis a little watered down so he would be clear-headed while playing poker against the bad guys. Right. Okay, so we've got manipulating the cards, we've got manipulating the money, we've got codes between various conspiracies, but there's ways where the cards themselves can speak to everybody. The cards themselves can speak to everybody, and there's also ways to find out what the cards are. I want to talk about, you actually just brought up something brilliant, which was using the props around you. Like I said, somebody might put a whiskey glass to the side so that you can't see how they're dealing. A lot of people just sit with their phones on the table. Oh, that's a shiner. That's a shiner. As hey, I'm dealing this, Jason, I can oh, see. What card am I holding? Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. Wow. So just be, again, be aware of some of the things that you allow, how loose you allow. Sometimes you don't need to know anything at all about uh, how the deck is stacked. Sometimes you can just give you, me, you, me, and you. And I know that probably Brian's going to win. However, your hand's going to be pretty great. My eight and sevens, but you got a queen and I think a ten. No, Which? I have an ace. But Brian's gonna take this. Was that a stack or that what was, was that? That was not a stack. Oh, are, are these marked? These are marked. What? These are marked cards. So you can see the marking. There's so many different kinds of marked cards. Where's this... the mark? Okay, so everybody thinks that marked cards have to be super sneaky in their markings. They do not. <gasps> Did you just find it? Oh my gosh, yes. And it's really clear once you see it. The easiest way to find out whether or not a deck of cards is marked is to do what they call going to the movies, which is riffle through, and you'll see a bunch of dancing around something or others. And only after a couple of things do you realize that plain as day, it has an A and a club. It has a jack and a heart. It has a jack and a spade. These are the best markings because they're so freaking obvious. Plus, if you miss these, right there on top, five of clubs, uh, six of clubs, uh, Joker, I guess? Yeah, five of hearts, king of spades. So you give these as a gift to a friend? You just leave some decks at their house on game night? Next time you come over, you're already set up. That's oh, wow. the best part, is that you could give them and they could sit there like a time bomb waiting to go off two years later at Christmas. Yeah, you bringing a deck to a game, that could be suspicious. You giving a deck and then playing with it six months later, no one's gonna suspect that. Now that you see it, that's super overt. Oh, that's yeah. all you see. There's even subtler ones where you have no idea they're there. So these are marked. Oh. So what do you know about marked cards? How do you find out? Uh, compare them to each other. You go to the movies. Go ahead. Oh, go, oh yeah, go, yeah. Go okay. to the movies. Okay. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. This is something I've never played with. I've been so excited to actually experience. So this is what's called a juice deck. A juice deck uses small differentials between the colors of the back design. So there's no overt marking like a queen of spades on it. But what you are gonna see, possibly if you look, is a dark blue square down here in the corner. Do you see how that square in the corner's a little different? The easiest way to see it is to walk away. So in this case, I'm gonna take off my glasses. Wait here, we'll pick a random card and both of us walk away and the things you're gonna look for are dark patches and light lines. Okay. So now we're gonna step up. I'm super blind without my yeah. glasses and I could see two dark patches and two lines. What about you? Oh, uh, I see a sailboat. Uh, for real? No, is it one of those 3D pictures? I can kind of see a dark patch yeah. here yep. and a dark patch here. Hmm. Oh, here and here. Oh, yeah. so it's, it's the really The dark subtle. patches are the suits, and then there's white lines that are going to be a little bit more faded across or in a different diagonal or however. Oh, wow. Do you see lighter lines here and here? Yeah, so that would be the king of clubs. Holy cow. Ooh, that one, that one, even as I set it down, mm -hmm. I could see dark spot, dark spot, which means what? Clubs, spades, hearts, 
diamonds. So that's a diamond. Mm -hmm. Now we want to look for the light kind of thread, I guess. That's right. It looks like diagonals to me. I don't know. So I would say that. Would, yeah, 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 yeah. You see the white diagonals? Four of diamonds. <laughs> Is that amazing? Uh, that's incredible. So that's a juice deck. Now that's a little bit bigger than an amateur, uh, you know, mark deck that you can get on scamstuff.com. But, uh, no. <laughs> so that's one everybody could see, but right. you showed me something that blew my freaking mind because it looked like freaking magic. Right, okay, so again, we went basic, which is just, hey, let's write the, uh, let's write the name of the card on the back of the thing. And then it's like, hey, we got some uh, splotchy splotchness, but this, this is super subtle. Do you know what card that is? <laughs> no. no, of course not. Here, uh, do me a favor, put these on. <laughs> Right. What do you see? What do you oh, okay. see? There's like a little circle with a line here. Mm -hmm. Looks like a, a Q maybe. And there, with these have like, these are marked differently. It's almost like a, it's almost like a Q in a way, but there, or a key. Like you know what it reminds corner? me of is copy protection from like early nineties PC games. Yes, <laughs> it's clear as day. But you can't see anything without it. Not at all. Wow. Okay, so this is the same technique or similar that they would use in old William Castle horror movies in the 60s. They would use the Illusiono glasses, where if you saw a ghost on the screen, you could look through the red lens to make it out. But if you were too scared, you looked through the blue lens and the ghost vanished. No wow, kidding. That's, yeah. cool. that's awesome. On Scam Nation, we've talked about how to make Mark decks. We've not talked about juice decks. We'll have to figure that one out. This is wizardry as far as I'm concerned. But in general, if you don't want to get cheated at your friendly neighborhood card game, listen for bottom deals. Super bottom deals. Watch for necktie. Watch for necktie. Be aware of the way people are handling the money. What else? Um, watch how they're shuffling. Pay attention not only to the dealer, but to the winner because they might be in cahoots. And swap out the decks often, often for reasons that are not accusing anybody of cheating. That said, you can also swap it in for a mark deck if you just want to be the cheater. <laughs> I mean, you know, that sounds like a different uh, so channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Dixon, where can we find more of your magical stuff? You can go to Instagram under erdnays1902 and see all my stuff. Heck yes. I can't wait to learn all of these over on the Scam Nation channel. Thank you so much, Chris Dixon. Uh, diction? diction? Yes. Crisp diction. Crisp, uh, diction. crisp diction. You speak very clearly. <laughs> Let's summon him. Daniel Murphy! Oh, he's here. My phone is so dumb! The only type of autocorrection I appreciate is that which will correct my grammar. Because if there's one thing I don't want to be perceived as, as some ignoramus who never made it past eighth grade, I made it to nine! Yeah, we're all very proud of you and all of the skills that you have honed using Grammarly.com. That's right! And I'm glad that I went to Grammarly.com slash Modern Rogue. I'm glad that I signed up for a 20% discount. t Techie Texas, have you sent out your holiday cards yet? Because Grammarly can help you send out the merriest of Christmas cheer. I used to draw pictures all the time because I was afraid to use words. Praise that, see what I did? Stress. That's how I, I get mixed up. I get mixed up. Grammarly makes it right. Grammarly also <laughs> helps you sound kinder in your emails. Maybe you can soften your message and communicate better with those people around you by using Grammarly to help shape your message to be more concise and more polite. You don't want to know what I was about to say. Luckily, my mind runs Grammarly. So I will say to you, thank you very much, Mr. Murphy. That is excellent advice. It is me, T Techie Texas, thanking you for going to grammarly.com slash modern rogue, where I got 20% off a premium subscription. I sounded more kind, more intelligent, and more. Like I don't sell used cars! I love you, Grammarly! I'm, I'm oh, breaking I'm the back. connection. I'm back. I'm breaking, it got weird. Yeah. Head on over to grammarly.com slash modern rogue. That's G R A M M A R L Y dot com slash modern rogue. Get 20% off a premium subscription. Start talking good, dang it. Yeah. That's their slogan, right? Do the clicky thingy and making the, with the words better. Back, uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of a way that you misuse like were or we're because my stupid phone keeps autocorrecting. Like I can't type the past tense of to be. I, I write uh, we were and it would change it to we're. W oh, and, yeah, and, yeah. and it's like Grammarly would catch that, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so instead I just had a um, stroke. Offer and link in the description below.
There was somebody who would always order a screwdriver. His drink would get too close and he would grab his drink and say, and then drop the chip in and then move his drink over there. And so the dealer was a hundred bucks at a time scooting everything out. That's how my friends used to steal Snickers from the convenience store. In their sodas, they would put the Snickers into their soda, just pay for the soda. At for the reals? Store. Yeah. Yeah.